this was a problem that this Fabian Cascadia was having. This was 2016 Cascadia, but uh, this problem will uh, be similar to any Cascadia from 2011 all the way to 2019, some 20s, then have the 125 body. If you don't know what is the 125 body, well, it's the older body, the, the chassis, and you know, it's kind of round. The new slick, kind of like newer body, that's the 126, or P4, the older one is the P3. So that will be the reference. And that specific faults only happen to this. Uh, a specific chassis and it doesn't matter if you have Cummins or Detroit engine on it as long as you have these two components this and this this is the P PNDB and it is the cutoff switch this is the one that controls the main power the main source of power um, in the past I did a video inspecting one of these uh, I open it completely and I'll show the reason why this one goes bad and uh, of course the reason why this one goes bad is because water goes in you find corrosion and different type of uh, uh, damage to the boards and the electronic components that are uh, the main reason why this one don't operate correctly and uh, uh, if you want to see a full video you want to see the full details on that specific video uh, you can check my channel i have uh, multiple videos about uh, trucks and problems they are very very special but in this case uh, as you can see at the beginning of the video we're having a truck that was running fine all of the sudden it was cutting off and sometimes dying completely and especially if you have automatic transmission it will die completely if you have manual transmission the engine will still operate inside the transmission and the engine are uh, connected by a mechanical clutch so the mechanical clutch will automatically maintain uh, uh, power uh, distribution and when it comes to automatic uh, uh, if the power is completely disconnected from the engine the automatic transmission goes into a check mode which is clutch interaction and some gear activation so and that will go to neutral and that will turn the engine off completely while you're driving and you're experiencing problems like the engine dies when you're driving so uh, if that is the case if you have this specific problem this is what you have to see and uh, you can hear noises or anything coming from this is if the problem is severe but in some cases the problem is not too severe it's not too bad then it's just gonna happen here and there like maybe once every maybe three hours four hours maybe eight once every day and all the gauges are going to go down and then up and uh, it, it feels like you turn the ignition switch and turn it back on off and on at the same time and that's how it feels and uh and here is the switch i mean the reason why you have to replace these two components uh, uh, is because the switch and these are part of the same circuit and this is a closed circuit there is not other type of uh a element that is connected to this or any type of uh, module that is connected to this so the harness this harness directly from here is the supply harness you have a power line negative line and the uh, control lines they are coming from this one you have four pins and you have six pins on this one and uh, the six pins on this uh, are one is an auxiliary pin then goes to us you know as a referral as a auxiliary component to determine if we have to do something about this one but in this case since we are we have a closed circuit we don't have any interference you don't have a way there is no a way to uh do a electronic diagnostic on this one so everything is just based on uh experience but there's one thing then if these components fail in this right here on this side is a LED and the LED is going to be flashing in the in the case of a malfunction so if the LED right here is solid means then everything is all right but if the LED is flashing or flashing rapidly it will that it, it is telling you that there is a fault somewhere so it's most likely that you will need to replace this one regardless um, you, you will need to identify the fault because uh, the, the way the LED flashes is by you know it determined it's trying to tell you specific faults with it but regardless of 
what is the fault, you always have to replace it. Either if there is a fuse broken, it will be doing that. But uh, uh, I don't know uh, if you guys have experienced this, but if you have a 126 Cascadia from 2017 and up, which is the newer style, as I said before, you are not going to run with the same problem. Uh, and if you experience this problem, then the ignition goes off and on all of a sudden, you will have a different problem. It's not going to be the same problem. And also the PNDB, in this case, this right here, is not located in the same location. For 125 Cascadias from 2011 all the way to 2020, depending on the chassis and depending on the manufacturer, I mean, on the, uh, uh, the uh, client then ask for the truck, I would say, uh, the request. Uh, this is just going to be located in one location, which is right by the firewall and next to the foot brake pedal, right underneath. And that is going to be this uh, PNDB. And in the case of the newer Cascadia 126 and, uh, and up, uh, like anything 2017 all the way to 2023, they are located on the passenger side, right under the uh, air AC conditioning uh, box right there. And um, that is going to uh, uh, control the same things. You're going to have a fuse for the alternator, fuse for the radio, fuse for the main components and everything. And uh, it works in a different way. Um, it, it, it has some similar to, uh, it, it is kind of similar, but not the same. So um, you will need to do a different video. I don't want to confuse you on that. So we're just going to refer to this problem. But anyway, uh, if, if you ever feel that your truck is doing that specific problem, then you can see, don't doubt, then this is your problem. Unless, unless this right here is not flashing. And this is not flashing you have a different problem. But before you replace this component, double check that this one is flashing and double check if you have a cutoff switch. If you don't have a cutoff switch, usually you're just gonna have a bypass uh, system, just a completely straight circuit, which means then these are just going to be controlled by the internal fuses. And these are going to be controlled by the internal fuses, but you are not going to have a cutoff relay. This cutoff relay will be completely disconnected. So the power source is going to go directly to the fuses and then to the suppliers, to different accessories. And uh, that's something that you have to double check. In that case, that is just uh, doesn't have the the uh, colors. I mean the 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 relay here, so it's gonna be a smaller. You wanna see a smaller uh, style. So that that style is less likely to have problems. So if you remember, if you have the problem, then the engine is shutting off like that, like all of a sudden, just like feel like it's cutting off, cutting off, cutting off, and. Uh, uh, and the light is not flashing on this one, or you have the other type of PNDB, you have a different problem. Check your batteries, check uh, other type of switches or something. That could be the reason why you're getting that kind of fault. But as it is now, just making sure that you know, then you have to be aware if you own a 125 or a P3 body style um, a Freightliner, this is one important component in this service, regardless of the miles. Doesn't mean then if you have one million miles or you have 100,000 miles, you, uh, you won't be uh, replacing this. No, no, no. If regardless of the miles, this is going to fail. And when it fails, it's gonna give you problems. So this video is to help you to determine what you have to do. You wanna come over to the shop, you're more than welcome. CCS Fleet Service is the shop, 8215 Beach Avenue. Fontana, uh, you can look uh, in the description of this video, there is the information to come to the shop. Um, subscribe to the channel is very important for me. Uh, I can do more informative videos, just the one I'm doing now. So uh, you guys can understand more about these topics of these uh, very expensive machines that are, you know, uh, very hard to repair nowadays. Anyway, 
I hope the, you like the video and thank you for watching, subscribe and, um, and share it with anybody that wants to know about these drugs.